right. Our next participant is Eugene Smore from Almo Beer Company. Come on up. Where's Eugene? There he is. We can keep the applause going until he gets up here. There we go. <laughs> All right, your timer is here. You can use either mic. All right, so we got the first slide up. Uh, my name is Eugene Seymour. I'm the founder <coughs> of Alamo Beer Company. Uh, Alamo Beer is a production brewery located in downtown San Antonio. It's only a 15 minute walk uh, from the actual Alamo. Uh, it's a new facility, it's about 18,000 square feet. We've got a 36 barrel brew house. Uh, we have tankage in place to make up to 22,000 barrels a year. The beer hall and tasting room will accommodate about 150 people inside, but up to 2,000 or more people when we combine it with the beer garden outside. In the 1880s, San Antonio was really, it was a beer town. It was full of many settlers from Germany and Central Europe. In fact, in 1883, there was an Alamo beer. In fact, they delivered it with that uh, horse cart there. I think that was for a parade, but those are actual Alamo beer bottles on there. Then prohibition happened. Alamo beer went away. Boy, did it go away. It took until the mid-1990s for me to come up with an idea to have an Alamo beer. It's kind of strange. At the time I thought of the concept, I had no idea there was an Alamo beer way back when. In 1997, I was able to get the trademark and finally, in 2003, I was able to work a contract brewing arrangement with a small brewery at the time that was only 50 miles north of San Antonio. We were brewing in the basement of an old antique shop. They did all the brewing. I did everything else. Package design, sales marketing, got the accounts, delivered the beer, restocked the shelves, cleaned the beer lines. It was a one-man wrecking crew. It was me in a minivan. It was incredible. We had 30 supermarkets that I was servicing and 50 bars and restaurants. Like the Battle of the Alamo, the odds of success were overwhelming. I was determined to take a stand and prove that the Alamo brand was viable, fiercely independent, and here to stay. In 2009, reinforcements arrived uh, with Benny Keith Beverage as a distributor for the entire state. In 2013, it was time to get serious about building a brewery. But first, I built a team that consisted of Jim Walter with 30 years of industry experience. He's our COO. James Hudak, our brewmaster with 20 plus years of industry experience, started brewing before uh, he was legally allowed to, I believe. Then in March of 2015, we opened up our uh, new brewery. Uh, with a brew house and systems that were designed by James Hudak to produce quality beer from the ground up. It was designed to grow. Our footprint had places and space so we can grow this brewery up to 40,000 barrels uh, as necessary. Taste, we make Central European style ales and lagers with roots to the early settlers of San Antonio. We make beer to drink. I like to say it's pretty much a howdy, may I please have another sort of beer. Simple, approachable, quality product. Uh, what y'all are tasting now is our amber lager. That's a Vienna style lager, similar to what would have been the original Alamo beer back in 1883. Um, others in our lineup include a golden ale, which was our flagship at the time, which it is, still is. It's a welcoming lighter style ale, uh, a Pilsner, just like you'd have in Germany. Uh, we have a German pale ale, we call it GPA, and that's well-balanced uh, American-style pale ale with all German ingredients. Our target market is Texas beer drinkers, 25 to 45, 50-50 men-women, distribution statewide, 1,400 accounts, 30% on-premise, 70% off, sells for $7.99 a six-pack. We have a strong footprint and we're ready to grow. Remember the Alamo. All right, we will. Well done. All right, great stuff, Eugene. All right, uh, pretty recognizable brand name. Uh, how do you think that'll play out in your stores, Amy? I like it. Well, great. Yeah, well, I love the old-fashioned <laughs> style. Um, the uh, colors don't, they're like major, but I love just the plain Alamo. Thank you. I like it. Nice. Our, our concept was to keep it clean, simple, and not a lot of confusion on the, on the uh, branding side of it. I like it. it. 
Um, so we're working on some growing styles, fast growing styles uh, in this country. Tom, what do you think of the beer? You know, I think this beer is really nice. I think it's clean. I think it's going to be drinkable in the Texas heat. The question I have is uh, for an amber lager, there's a lot of maltol, there's a lot of marshmallow. I thought it was a little fruitier than I would expect for style. Um, I expected it to be a little bit sharper, a little bit more CO2 by a little more crisp, but I thought it was a well-crafted beer. Thank you. Dan, what do you think of the business strategy? Um, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty solid one. I mean, obviously, you're with a, a strong wholesaler in Texas. Um, but what, you know, what other things are you doing in the market to help make your brand stand out in the consumer's mind? I know Texas is a very crowded and um, you know, almost diluted market with all the, the craft, and, and local is pretty much the neighborhood in, in, in which you reside in, but what are you doing to, to grow your brands it, it, around? Our them? primary focus, focus has been on in-store sampling opportunities. We're doing 40 or more of those a week. Uh, our sales team is out there doing those. We actually have a dedicated tasting team in the Dallas-Fort Worth market. So getting that product into a consumer's hand and trying it. Um, it's pretty much a look you in the eye, hand sell it. But we feel that once folks have tried our beer, they're going to like it. They're going to move up from some of those big national brands and into something that's local and craft. We're fortunate that our version of local is the state of Texas, which in itself is really a region. Um, so we are able to play off the, the whole state, and the branding does work well uh, for Texans. Stephen, what's your uh, stance on uh, Alamo, and uh, do you have any questions for Eugene? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a cohesive vision. This, this lineup's definitely cohesive. Um, I guess my concern would be, I mean, do you think, I mean, you use the word simple and approachable, do your retailers, do they like that, or are they starting to look for, you know, where's the IPA? I, I feel like that would be the first question I would get with a lineup like that. Well, we did a GPA, uh, which we thought would fill in. Uh, my mistake, I thought it was going to be a flash in the pan. So when we put together our original lineup, it did not include an IPA, but our IPA is coming out uh, year-round in uh, March of next year. All right, Carmen, you get the last word on this. What do you think of Alamo? Um, <clears throat> you know, it was interesting hearing Bert and Lester talk this morning about um, sales on premise and something that stood out for me about your brewery and brand was <clears throat> the actual tap room space. So I'm curious what percentage of, of volume you're doing at the tap room itself. We did about 700 barrels out of our tap room this year and uh, we should finish the year uh, somewhere between eight and 9,000 barrels overall. Okay. So it is a growing business for us. We want folks to come to tap room, have a good time and then share that experience when they go back with their friends and hopefully turn them on to our product. Yeah, it's, that seems like a really smart move because I think that you have a solid story and there's, um, your brand has so much history um, and, and good content behind it, but I think that the packaging falls short a little bit in helping tell that story. Visually, it hints at it um, you know, with a tight face and um, I think the simplicity of the package could be um, uh, add a little bit more of the story and I think that you'll get there in, in a better way. Oh, okay, you. great feedback from the judges. Thanks so much. Eugene? Thank you. All right, going to move on to our next contestant.